Okay, it's March 8th and we're out here in a wheat field trying to assess tiller count. So we've gotten a lot of questions on top dressing wheat and when should I go? And I think an important point on top dressing wheat is to not be too early. And wheat will not utilize any nitrogen until it breaks dormancy and starts to, to take off in the spring, which we're just now coming out of dormancy. Our suggestions and our recommendations include a nitrogen program starting in the fall. So we do not start the spring out with zero in. We already have something in the system. And in order to capitalize on avoiding adverse weather, which we just came off of a week or 10 days of quite a bit of rain, that's a good reason not to have your N on because there's a lot of opportunity for that for loss volatility and leaching. So pretty much from this point forward now, we're gonna to be to the point where it's time to, to be thinking about top dressing wheat. The time frame on that is dictated a little bit on weather conditions, what the forecast looks like and where we're at in breaking dormancy. It isn't always the same date every year. However, we're coming off a couple weeks here of some abnormally warmer weather. Wheat is starting to break dormancy and it already has. So the next thing after that is, is you need to assess the crop you have and We've been out doing that in the last couple days. We're gonna to continue to do that for the next couple days, but we just wanna give you a little explanation on what to look for in your own fields and just as a side check as to what's going on. It's quite simple. All you really need is a tape measure. Find an area in the field that's, that looks like the rest of the field. If you notice, there's a little pocket of missing plants. Here's a row of solid plants. Just try to pick something that's representative most. And then we wanna come in here and we want to pop these plants out of the ground. Knock the soil off and get down to the plant level. Now, if you're really careful, like in this case, here's still the seed left from last fall that we planted. We're measuring the tiller counts per plant. A tiller is represented by a stem with three leaves. So if you notice, this one has three leaves, the next one has three leaves, and the last one has three leaves. So this particular plant is a three tiller plant. Carefully peel this apart, get each plant separated, and start breaking down what your tiller counts are. In a 12 inch row, count the number of plants, get an idea of the tillers per plant. We're gonna go back to the whiteboard here and we're gonna show you some calculations on what we do with that. But this is what you're doing in the field. We wanna to make top dress applications when the time is best fit. In my opinion, I think most people generally go on the early side and in a lot of cases too early. So we, we purposely try to hold people off. That's why we're just now doing tiller counts right now. The reason why we do tiller counts is kind of assess our situation and kind of make some decisions on how much to go with now or how much to go with in total. Whether you do all your nitrogen in one application or do it in two, I think it's still a good idea to have an understanding of what you got to deal with. So I'm gonna walk through a little bit of a calculation here on tiller counts. So we just came from the field to kind of show you how to find your tillers. We measured off one foot of row. What we're looking for in that foot is a couple different things. One is number of plants per foot. 22 might be a typical number as an example. We can then take that number 22 times three to get plants per yard of row. So that would be 66 in this case. The next thing we have to determine is what's our average tiller per plant. You could have every plant have three tillers, which is fine. You could have twos and threes and twos and threes and maybe an occasional four. You just wanna get an average, an idea of the average. The average can be a decimal point. It does not have to be a whole number. I'm gonna use three in this case because the field we just came from, the majority of all those plants were three tillers per plant. 198 tillers per yard. Row configurations are what comes in our next and last calculation. Most wheat is gonna be a seven and a half inch row because it's seeded with a drill most generally. If you have a different row configuration, this calculation is different. But we then take this 198 and the factor for seven and a half inch rows is 4.8. And so what that gives us is 950.4, and that's our tillers per square yard. This is the number we need to know. Our goal for optimum potential, 640 tillers per square yard. So as you can see, this is quite a bit higher than 640. So we have plenty of stand. What we're finding in looking at some wheat here, we're seeing a lot of good tiller counts. What that tells me is 
we are not in a hurry to get wheat top dressed. If you can target closer to the 640 range, you'll actually achieve optimum potential, yield potential based on your population. It's kind of like planting corn. If we go plant 50,000 seeds per acre versus 33, we know what 50,000 will do to us. If we have too many tillers, sometimes that overpopulates and you have competitive tillers to each other. This is a great opportunity to manage your nitrogen program to kind of trim this down a little bit. Um, sometimes if we have tiller counts of 1,200 to 1,500, which I've seen before, those are situations where we purposely want to wait almost all the way to April to abort some tillers, but we're in a good position right now. So this is a reason to not be in a super big hurry because the weak tillers will start to fall off and you'll get rid of a few, which is a positive thing to get us back to the 640 range. Basically, as soon as ground conditions are fit, there's no hurry, but as soon as they're fit, it's time to go. If I was to split nitrogen, knowing that we have good tiller counts, that we're trying to achieve our 640, pretty much if we go out of the gate with a first pass in the 45 to 50 pound in range um, is a good spot to be. And then we can tweak the final number in our second application. If you do a single application, which is fine too, quite honestly, we got the rest of this month of March to be thinking about getting that done. So time is really on our side. Don't get anxious, don't be upset. You just wait for good ground conditions and it's time to go. On a final note, we have had a few questions. It's supposed to get cold next week, highs in the 30s, lows in the 20s. People have asked, well, does that concern you? And really the answer is no. Wheat's pretty healthy right now. It has broken dormancy and, and we're starting to root down and, and it will handle the cold. That really could be a good opportunity to be top dressing wheat. We could have some frozen mornings and some frosty mornings. I would not let that hold me back. Where that really tends to hurt you is if you have ponding water and then you get cold conditions like that. But not without ponding water, we'll be just fine. Once again, thanks for tuning in to our YouTube channel please subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions on your own wheat, don't be afraid to call our office, contact one of us, we're always here to help. We usually use a one foot measurement. 12 inches is all you need. It's a one foot measurement, measure off 12 inches, measure off 12 inches. What you wanna do in a 12 inch area, in a, in a 12 inch one foot, so we measured off one foot. What we're looking for in that foot, per foot, how many plants are in a yard.